Hello and welcome, I'm Machine Dana. In this video, we're going to be going through how to add a blur effect onto your OBS Studio stream. OBS Studio, one of the main benefits of it is you can download plugins. One of those plugins is StreamFX. If you're familiar with this, you'll probably know all the benefits of it, one of which is the blur effect. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can get that blur effect onto your stream and just to give you some really nice flavors and ideas of how you can use that. So it should be a relatively straightforward video. It's an important plugin because not only does it have a breadth of other things that you can do. Blur effect in particular is a very powerful effect if you use it in the right way. Here I am sort of talking about like subtlety and stuff like that and I've got like this dumb t-shirt on. Also, this is the second time I've recorded this video. The first time I recorded it, I decided to record it in OBS Studio whilst I was demonstrating a blur effect. Think about how dumb that is. I was blurring the screen that I was recording to show the blur effect. Literally couldn't see any of the content. What an absolute waste of time. <laughs> If you find this useful, hit the like button, feel free to subscribe, and also, you're more than welcome to check me out at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. Let's go. Okay, first and foremost, we need to be going to obsproject.com. It's like this link here. I'll link it in the description below. You can also get the GitHub here, where it's got the uh, download files. It's located at the bottom. I'll also link another video below, which shows you how to install plugins. So I don't need to get into that too much into this video. But basically, you need to install this plugin called StreamFX. You do get lots of different options in this, like 3D, transforms, glows, outline shadows, signs, distance, field, source mirrors. Source mirrors in particular is very powerful. I'll talk a little bit about source mirrors in in the context of using blurs, which is obviously the main point. But I will be doing videos, I'm sure, on most or all of these effects in some form or another. Once you've installed stream effects, there's a number of different things that you get. For example, you can add a source mirror here, which allows you to mirror an existing source without changing it. If you make a change to the original source, it will apply to the mirrored source. But if you make a change to the mirrored source, it will not apply that change to the original source, if that makes sense. So there's quite a lot of flexibility that that gives. Next, we get onto filters. So right click and filters onto a particular source and there's a number of different new filters that are applied as well for example 3d transform and of course the blur effect so to add a blur effect to any source you simply right click that source click on filters click on the plus icon here and blur you name the blur then you get a load of different blur related options here and these are the options we're going to go into today briefly and then i'm just going to show you some of the ways that that can be applied onto your stream and hopefully that'll give you some good ideas on what you can do with your stream fortunately if you are using streamlabs obs there basically isn't a way to do this as far as i'm aware and if there is is, let me know. I'll make a video about it. <laughs> Streamlabs seems to get like quite a lot of bad press sometimes. A little bit bloated. It takes up a lot of CPU usage. But there are a lot of good things about Streamlabs OBS. They really do have their pros and cons to those platforms. And I, I've used both platforms quite a lot. Most recently, I've moved to OBS Studio. The main reason for that is the plugins will allow me to do more complicated things on the stream. And that not only gives more content for you guys, but also means my own stream hopefully will be more powerful. Powerful? Powerful the right word? My stream will hopefully be able to lift more weights. Do you even lift, bro? So anyway, so this is the blur effect. You can see already the sort of, this is like an application capture that I've got, which is just a placeholder image that I've created. We can slide the box blur down or all the way up and you get like a quite a significant blur effect that can be applied there. There's different types of blurs that you can apply. I'm not an expert on blurs, so I don't really know what these mean. I just tend to go with a Gaussian blur as that's kind of like a more of a softer blur effect, as you can see here. But there's other ones like dual filtering as well, which seems to like double the filtering effect every single time. And that's that could create quite a cool effect that it almost like it could create some pretty good transition effects in my opinion. But now I'm going to demonstrate most of what I'm doing here with the Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur allows you obviously to select the amount of blur that's being applied and you can apply directional rotational or zoom blur. So this will apply like a zoom effect to it. You see there it's separated away from itself a little bit and you can also change the center point as well. Percentage for example if I put it to 100% center x it then moves more to the side, the blur, rather than a diagonal. If I just swap these around briefly, just apply the blur. You see the blur then goes north-south because it's 100% fix on the y-axis. Hopefully that gives you some flavor of the types of things you can do with the blur. Some other things you can do here, back to the Gaussian blur here on the area blur. And we're going to do a step scaling. So what a step scaling actually does here, and I'll demonstrate it, it increases the percentage by which in the x or the y axis x and the y i don't even care it increases the x and the y axis percentage in which the blur pulls so if i do a step scale for x like up here you'll see 
when I apply the blue, it will pull to the side a lot more. Whereas if I drop it down and scale on the Y, you'll see it'll pull north-south more. And that's the effect it applies. So just there's quite a lot of flexibility built into this plugin, and it's very powerful depending on how you particularly want to use it. Now, for most people, a basic, straightforward, linear blur is probably going to fix most of the ideas you might have to apply this, but it's just to let you know. I just want to talk briefly about the applying a mask. This is quite a cool one. So for this next blur effect, I'm jumping into the camera, same camera I was using for Streamlabs OBS to record to make sure I didn't blurring issue I talked about earlier. Anyway, I'm now in the camera within OBS Studio to demonstrate the mask effect on cams. I've now got a camera source that's open within OBS Studio. If I now open up that camera effect and go on filters and apply a filter to this, just move this slightly to the right here, we're applying a blur filter to this and I want to apply a mask. So obviously straight away that's blurred the whole camera. Let's just let's just reduce the blur to nothing for now. Apply a mask. We want to choose an edge from which and also the amount of area that that will then cover. So just briefly here, you can apply a blur based on an image or based on a particular source. For instance, if you had an audio visualizer, you have the audio visualizer blurring out an area based on where the paths were of that audio visualizer as in the frequency Paths. So you can get quite playful with this. I'm just going to stick with a regional mask type for now just to demonstrate how this works. I'm going to turn the blur up to five here, the Gaussian blur, just to demonstrate this. Now I'm going to apply a mask type over the top edge, which will drop down blur to only the bottom of my screen. You'll see here the top of my face, my lovely pretty face starts to unblur and it leaves a blurring effect just at the very bottom of the webcam here and this is quite nice because you can apply different filters and images and make those images transparent over them it can create like a translucent colored blurred effect over it which would be quite nice if you then want to apply for instance your latest follower or your latest bits donation or something combination of the two within that area i've seen this applied really really well on some other streamers streams you can also apply it to the top by applying it to the bottom edge, this then will unblur the bottom edge, where at only the very top side. Now it's a very subtle one, so I'm going to turn the size of that blur up a little bit. Now you can see if I just adjust the bottom edge to be a little bit less subtle. Now it just didn't work particularly well because it cuts off the top of my head. If, if I was to readjust my actual camera size uh, or just the angle of my camera, you'd, this would be above my head and it could create quite a cool camera effect blur on the top here. Particularly if you had some sort of edge around it, some sort of animation that worked around that. You can also invert the region, but that's kind of pointless because it's got options for every single region here. Now this gets quite powerful when you think of it in terms of using mirrored sources and then applying shadows and things like that so if i want to as you can see on this camera i've been able to apply see on the side here this is actually a camera source behind it's the same camera source that's mirrored with a color correction effect and a translucent effect applied to it and i've offset it so it's like a colored camera it's more of a subtle thing anyone that's design focused probably would notice it and the people that don't notice it probably just don't realize they notice it, it just makes things look a little bit crisper i'm a really big fan of keeping simple as possible and my latest stream design is an example of me applying a really simple theme to my main game scene just to illustrate that a little bit more clearly i think i've actually not used a mirror source at this point i've just duplicated the sources as scenes and that's kind of like the old way of doing things before the mirrored sources became available so i've got this is the finished product version which i've then imported as a source using the scene but then we've got a square cropped cam which is just a cropped version of the cam on its own then we've got a square blurred cropped cam and if we right click here not the source but actually the scene see the scene itself has got a number of different filters so we've applied a blur here a gaussian blur over an area over the whole lot applied a core correction here brightness reduction and then also a opacity to it so it's made it semi-transparent and then we've made a color grading just changes the blue lift to add the purple effect so what we're left with is two different sources one which is the main cam one which is the blurred effect behind it and hopefully this just gives you some ideas of how you can use it some other ways that you can use this you could in theory apply like a blurred effect to your base assets so that when you're having like a zoom effect on your 
main cam, blur out the background to put the focus on you briefly. Then you could switch back to the normal game scene and unblur the live scene and sort of reduce the size of the cam. That's one of the effects that I'm intended to apply on my stream, whereby it blurs out the background and there's a zoom effect on my cam. Gotta be careful how you use that though, and it's worthwhile having different options because sometimes you might want to zoom the cam but actually still see what's behind you. So for me, I'm probably going to have a blurred zoom and just a unblurred zoom option on my stream deck once I've set those up. The way you would do that is you'd simply right click, click on filters, and you'd add the filter, blur, to this, the main screen game catcher, and then you'd have a duplicate version of it without the blur, and you'd transition from one scene to the other whenever you wanted to unblur or blur the scene. A little bit like that. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully I've given you some good ideas on how you can apply blur subtly and not so subtly on your stream. There's a load more things that you can do with this. Uh, I'll be really keen to know like how you guys put this to good use, mainly so that I can steal your ideas because, you know, why not? <laughs> Have a great day. Take care.